Hi, Josh here. Today I'm going to show you how to make custom XT30 cables like you would need to connect to a Modius controller, an MJBOTS power disc, or Pi 3 hat. It's often the case that in any application you won't be able to find an off-the-shelf cable because you need custom genderings or custom lengths or custom wire types. Soldering the cables doesn't have to be too hard if you have the right tools and the right technique and I'll do my best to show you how you can make robust cables usable for many applications. Let's get started. So the tools we will need are the XT30 connectors themselves, either the female variety or the male variety. Wire, I'm going to use 18 gauge silicone wire. Anyway, 16 and 18 are the two sizes which work best, though you can use smaller or larger if you need. I recommend using separate flux. I use Amtech flux, but probably most any tacky flux will work well. It makes a big difference using separate flux for getting a good connection. Um, heat shrink tubing, I use 1 8 inch tubing, because that's what you can get easily in the US, but any comparable size should work. Lead free rosin core solder, some helping hands to hold the pieces in place a wire cutter and a V-blade stripper to strip the wire, and a hot air gun to activate the heat shrink tubing. And lastly, a soldering iron. I have a Pace ADS-200. Any temperature controlled soldering iron with reasonable power should work all right, as long as the tip you have is appropriately sized, which for this would be, um, here the tip is approximately the width of the terminal which is about this, the correct size for this operation. A little bit smaller is probably okay. Bigger can be tough because you'll melt the plastic. So to start, I will set the soldering iron to 700 Fahrenheit, which you have to do the conversion to Celsius if you want to. Um, I will cut off two sections of wire for our test cable here. I guess I'll make them be the same length, but for this purpose, it doesn't really matter. And then I'll strip each of these, which you want to remove for the females. For both, really, you want to remove about as much as the length of the terminal. So that's maybe two or three millimeters. Um, and try not to nick any of the strands, or at least as few as you can. And I often gently twist it, which makes the following operations a little bit easier. So we'll gently twist it. Now the next step is to position the, um, I usually do the negative terminal. The XT30s all have a minus sign or a plus sign on them, which you can use to identify the negative. The negative terminal is also the one that's rounded. And so I usually start with the negative terminal upright and the black wire like that. Now to start, you don't put them together. First, you tin both the wire and the connector. For the wire, I put a little bit of flux on the end of the wire. And then with the solder and the iron, this is my iron, the tip is about the same size as the tip of the connector. You heat up the underside of the wire with, you put a little bit of solder on the, um, of the iron, touch it to the bottom of the wire, and then put until it heats up enough such that you can melt so reflow solder into the wire. There. So you want solder flowing through all the uh, strands. And so now that wire is tinned, now we'll tin the connector, which for me. What I will do is put a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron, touch it to the inside of the connector, and then once it heats up, touch the solder wire into the connector, and then wait again a little bit after the solder's in there. And if it worked, you should have a layer of solder the length of the connector terminal. That's the critical part is to get the solder all the way through the strands of the wire for which the flux helps and to get the solder coating the uh, solder cup on the connector. 
Once that is done, you can use the helping hands to position the wire such that it's resting in the solder cup. And then take your iron, wet it with a little bit of solder. I usually put the iron on one side with the solder until the wire and the connector are both reflowed then add a little bit of extra solder to get the flux from the solder and especially making sure to put a little bit on the underside so that you know that there is a new solder and flux on that underside of the connector there because you want to have the whole thing reflowed and then once all the connector the wire and the connector are reflowed and there's fresh solder on them the joint is complete and so if you look at that you should be able to see that there, you can tell that it's not cold because there's a fillet of solder all the way around that was fresh and flowed through the whole width of the wire and you can see that there's a it's smooth all the way around if you have a cold joint you'll see a part that has no fillet of solder around it um, and that implies that the connector or the wire was not hot enough when you did the uh, joint and so if it's not hot enough probably if you have a temperature controlled iron that means you didn't wait long enough you really shouldn't just increase the temperature because if it goes too hot you will melt the plastic but you want it to be approximately 700 Fahrenheit and wait until it's sufficiently hot that the solder will flow all the way around and so that's one joint I'll do the next one here as well so we'll reinsert the connector put the cable in the wire in We'll add flux to the positive wire. We'll do the same operation where I wet the tip of the iron, touch it to the bottom of the strands, and then touch fresh solder to the top of the strands until the solder flows all the way through the wire and saturates the strands. And wait a second or so. And then we'll do the same thing with the cup of the connector. So put a little bit of solder and touch it until it heats up then put a bit more fresh solder on and there we have solder in the cup. We'll do the same operation where we uh, attach the use the helping hands to position the wire into the solder cup. Take our iron put solder on the tip touch it to the side wait for it to reflow, maybe add a tiny bit extra solder to help with heat transfer. Once it reflows all the way, then we can touch a little bit of solder, especially to the underside, and then remove the heat. Wait for it to solidify. And there, now we have two solder joints, the negative and positive. At this point, to finish the connection, we will Take, cut some heat shrink to the appropriate length, uh, maybe a centimeter or so, depends upon how stiff you want it to be. And you can slide that then down around the connection. Like so. And then we'll get the hot air gun. And you have to just find the right temperature for the hot air gun. I often keep mine probably hotter than it should be. You blow the hot air gun on it for a few seconds until the heat shrink tubing has shrunk. And there is one end of the female connector. There is a slight additional trick to doing the male connectors in that when you solder to them, you want to be sure to have a female connector mated when you do the soldering. Otherwise, the terminals will bend and warp in the housing as you go to solder. And so as long as you have the female terminal in, it can be a blank one or one with wires on it, and then you just grab the female terminal with the second hands and solder it like so. And that will result in a good connection on the male side as well. That's a demonstration of how to make XT30 cables. Thanks.